God, our Creator, and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we come towards the end of the year in the season, and we do look back, do we not, on the year behind us? 2015 has been an interesting year, full of highs and lows, perhaps more lows than highs, at least as the news has portrayed it. There have been grave threats to humans and non-humans, for that matter, but there have been good things that have happened as well. In some ways, it's been a year of nostalgia. A Star Wars movie came out, and if, you're, if you grew up at my time and era, this took you right back to your childhood, something I got to share with my children, like new generation. And it was a strange and interesting cultural phenomenon. In a year like 2015, one could say quite a bit about the themes of light and darkness that are so prominent in that film franchise. There was another, another movie that came out with a little less fanfare, the Peanuts movie. I don't know if you know this, but it's the, it mirrors the 50th anniversary of the first uh, Peanuts Christmas special. And again, if you're my age, this is something you probably watched every year on TV growing up. Uh -huh. um, a lot of warmth and fun in that film. Whether it was the ridiculous little Christmas tree that Charlie picked, the last one, that his friends spiffed up with him by waving their arms around like this and then moving out of the way, or uh, singing Hark the Herald, Angels Sing with their noses straight in the air. My sister and I always enjoyed that. Or Charlie Brown's tortured search for the meaning of Christmas. This little animated gem had something to offer pretty much every year. It's interesting that Charlie's chief concern was the commercialization of the holiday. I guess the more things change, the more they stay the same. For those of us who have seen the special, you probably recall that the riddle of Christmas's true meaning was solved by Linus, the character who always, always carried the little blue security blanket with him everywhere he went. In the Christmas play that's going haywire, Charlie screams out, Who can teach me the true meaning of Christmas? And Linus steps up to the stage and says, I can tell you the true meaning of Christmas, Charlie Brown. Lights, please. I wasn't expecting the lights actually to go off. <laughs> and then he tells the story that we just heard a, a chunk of from Luke chapter 2. The story of shepherds in the field and angels that come and terrify them and the baby Jesus that's born in a manger. There's an interesting thing that you may not have noticed before. I didn't notice until very recently. As Linus utters the words, fear not, he lets go of his blanket. This is the only time this ever happens in any of the Peanuts specials. There is a simple but profound message here. The story of Jesus' birth allows us to let go of whatever we are clinging to for safety and security. For our security is found in him, and not in those things we cling to. There certainly are a lot of things in our world that make us insecure, that give us the urge to reach out and grab something. And this year was certainly a year where one would understand if one needed a Linus blanket, whether it's threats from religious extremism, gun violence, racial tensions, climate change, it's a lot of bad news and darkness. But we must ask ourselves whether those security blankets can truly deliver in a moment of need. Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, speaking through his character Linus, suggests that perhaps they don't. The good news of the birth of Jesus is that salvation is not on our shoulders. We can let go of the urge to set right what has gone wrong in the world. Not that we don't have a part to play in making the world a better place. Quite to the contrary, we're all called to serve, to do good, 
to make a, a difference in the world. But the message of Christmas is that salvation is ultimately God's work, not ours. And God shows up in the most unlikely of places. Christ's birth among us is the beginning of hope. And hope is always born out of dark and insecure times. Perhaps it's because we're aware of those moments of how insecure and fragile life really is. Some people are more naturally attuned to this reality. Shepherds, for example, the lowest rung in their society, people who couldn't do anything else, became shepherds. But these men, not royal messengers, are the ones who receive the message of the angels about a baby being born. Mary and Joseph no doubt felt insecurity and worry as they searched for a room that fateful night so many centuries ago. Where was God leading them? What would they find? And what exactly did it mean that Jesus would be born to this trusting young peasant woman who pondered these things in her heart? We have the privilege of perspective about the story and the characters and what it all means. The ones who lived it did not. There are many people on our planet today who live like this all the time. They have no Linus blanket, nor any illusion of a security system to protect them in dark times. In light of recent events in Paris, San Bernardino, Colorado, and elsewhere, perhaps we can relate to their feeling of insecurity and darkness. But out of darkness and uncertainty comes hope for the future. And it is in that hope that we dwell as God's people. It is what Christ's birth among us means. As you enjoy this holiday with family and friends, I pray that you would know the presence of God's love and grace that has come to us in a baby in a manger. Merry Christmas.